My name is Jan Hoy and I'm a sculptor. I work, as you can see by the pieces around me, in clay. Uh, I live on Whidbey Island and um, create water-based clay sculptures that are tabletop all the way up to monumental. I knew I was an artist sometime when I was going to the university in Pullman, Washington State University, and I, I was attempting to be very practical for my folks and be in landscape design and do something I could, you know, get a job. And I really had a problem. Like this was, I was, uh, actually it was parking lot dimensions you had to do to, and you're landscaping around just a parking lot. And I thought, this is like the most boring thing I have ever heard. I can't make a career out of this. It took about a year of feeling horrible about all that. And then it just came out, I am an artist and I am going to do this. And I'll see what happens. I have to make it work. An artist I admire and probably at the top of the pile because he was very influential to me, even though he was deceased at the time, it was Guy Anderson, who's a painter. Mystic, Northwest Mystics, that was written up by Life Magazine. Um, but after his death, I curated a show, a, a very large show, took up two huge spaces in Port Townsend. And I lived with his work for probably six months. I mean, literally pieces were in my house, you know, and I had images on my computer of all pieces in the show. I was gra doing graphic design, so I did a big glorious brochure, and you know, just on and on and on, just all this information and visual about him. And I came to realize that it, no matter what his age, he had been so passionate about continuing his art. It was like nothing I had ever seen. And I just took all that in. Uh, at the time, I was frustrated with what I was doing, which is some two-dimensional work. And uh, it just, I all of a sudden, it was like an epiphany in a way that I am meant to be like that. That's really who I am. If I just shed the fear of anything going wrong and this and that and you can't, just do it the way he does it. In your own material, your own way, your own voice, you just do it. And so I did. I started working in this material in 2004, so at this point it's been 20 years. Clay seemed like a, a body that I could work with, I could handle, and it would mold to my demands. <laughs> it was one of those life moments of turning everything around and finally doing exactly what I wanted, and I, I love it, every minute of it. These are all handmade, so um, I am taking small pieces of clay, uh, working them up from, say, this foot, little, little teeny pieces up each side, measuring, smoothing as I go, and sometimes when there's two sides, having to meld those together in the middle and go toward each other. And I usually make for these complex pieces, a little tiny maquette so I can have an eye where that process is taking me. Well, my favorite part of finishing a piece is watching the rust happen. There are many coats of this oxidizing that go on, three to four usually, to get it to this stage. And it's very organic. You watch it happening and you watch it dripping and making puddles. And so it comes up with its own unique look. Each piece is different. The largest piece so far is a piece called Continuity, and it's at the Veterans Home in Walla Walla. It's a big core 10 steel piece. I have designed a 15 to 16 foot tall one for a roundabout um, as a finalist, and that's as far as that went. But it was all done as far as engineering, and uh, you know the whole design was put together. Well, 
Well, I see my work. I've gone on to this, this flow of finding these ri rather rigid shapes that flow through space. And I'm still captivated by that. I've spent like three or four years doing this and it doesn't stop. So the interest is still there and there's more to explore. So I want to keep doing that. And they also lend themselves to either to being any size. They could be little tiny jewel-like things all the way up to so big people are walking underneath them. And uh, that, that's exciting to me that they have that capacity in that you can make something perfect that moves through space. I think that's what I really like about it. When I was doing 2D work, it was just on the, you know, just so flat I couldn't push on it enough. I couldn't get it 3D enough to where, you know, I had anything going. And the more this goes, but also the simpler it is, the more it makes a statement to me. Simple is, is everything. Uh, next, I'm, uh, some of the pieces from this exhibit are really speaking to me. It's the rhythm pieces, and I feel I need to explore what they're doing. I just have two of them, and there's more, sh more forms that have already come to me that I want to try. And I want to make one of those larger too, and possibly in color. So I'm kind of excited about that. I want people to get something when they look at this. I want them to receive something. It's not just, as it appears, a static thing, but it's a communication. And I want them to receive whatever that communication is to them, and hopefully it has some meaning to them. That would be the best. Uh, what, what meaning do they have for you? Uh, joy, just pure joy is what they have for me. <laughs>